DJ Mountain Way. Uh, it's uh, Ruin, and I have a package that went to my P.O. box, or specifically it went to the street address for my P.O. box. So I'm guessing it might be something from Amazon. I have not ordered anything in a while, so my guess is somebody noticed my wish list for this year's birthday and sent me gifties, in which case I'm going to offer a great big thanks. I uh, tried to keep it to 42 items on my birthday wish list for this year, and I noticed it was like at 40 items a few days ago, and then I brought it up to, I think, 45. Um, if you think there's more than 45 on there, that's because there is an original edition and 10th um, anniversary, thereabouts, reissue edition of the RPG whole um, Human Occupied Landfill, which is a completely playable RPG, but it is written and formatted in a way that satirizes um, you know, the, uh, the storytelling tabletop RPGs and their, uh, and their players, especially, uh, fans of the, uh, of the White Wolf, um, World of Darkness canon. It does say a gift. Um, hi, Rowan, enjoy your gift from Dark Horse, who is somebody who leaves a bunch of really ornery comments on my YouTube. Um, so, I, <laughs> I'm not sure how to take this. I mean, thank you. Absolutely, thank you. I will probably scan the, uh, the codes and everything, and I have a double of this. So, I've got another thing that's got both the, the uh, a gift for you, enjoy your gift, hi, Rowan, enjoy your gift from Dark Horse again. And, uh, so, yeah, um, I, oh, oh, there are two. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Skelebunnies Volume 1 and the graphic novel edition of Stitch. So, I can unload those comic books on somebody now. <gasps> oh my gosh, I, uh, so, while, um, I guess when I come back from doing an outside-the-house chore, I will, uh, I don't know, go through a couple other things on my birthday wish list for this year. Honestly, I wasn't even expecting it to get this much. I really was not. I, I just, I don't know. Uh, thank you, and thanks so much for your ornery comments. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, I, I kind of enjoy the sparring to an extent anyway, but uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, I love Tommy Kovac. And uh, he and I were, uh, were also live journal friends when that was still a thing everybody um, and their mother did. And I can't say everybody and their mother because I knew a couple of people's mothers who <laughs> signed up for Live Journal. But yeah, he and I were, uh, were Live Journal friends for a while. And we do have each other added on Facebook and Instagram, but I don't know, I, I barely use Facebook lately. Uh, so Stitch, if you're unfamiliar, uh, it's, ki it's, it's, it's a very thinly veiled um, coming out allegory. There's two families of siblings, but they're cousins to each other. And uh, you know, like they end up as dolls in a crazy old lady's attic who is ostensibly their grandmother and it's uh oh my gosh uh it, it's wonderful you know it's got the creepy doll thing which a lot of people have loved especially goths since at least the uh the early 90s when um um, 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 um tina root and uh oh crap i always forget the other woman's name but uh, Switchblade Symphony, they did that, like, you know, creepy doll, creepy baby kind of look for a while. Um, Skelebunnies, though, that kind of began as a filler comic, and, um, you know, just like for a page or two in Stitch to... <laughs> Parental advisory, fuck it. So, uh, so yeah, this is a Devil Wooby, which is a little recurring fantasy <clears throat> race of quasi-demonic entities. It's kind of, imp I don't know, th there's not, there's not much story going on with Skelebunnies. Just a whole lot of, uh, <laughs> edgelordy kind of, well, I don't know, like, did, was it really edgelord? Well, okay, this panel is definitely edgelordy. It's just got a whole lot of very, very mature humor. <laughs> and a lot of dongs.
like, let's just admit it, there's a lot of dongs, oh my gosh, but there's a, uh, there's a story, like, it's like one, maybe two pages. The reason that I am looking for it is because it inspired me to send him an email just, uh, just asking just a couple really stupid questions, like, who's his favorite characters in his comics? I think this was just after the, uh, after the Skele Bunnies, uh, first issue came out. And then, of course, I had to ask, what is a Heeny? Because Heeny is a pet of a character in a little one-shot throwaway story, and I'm not finding it, and I will recognize it when I see the Heeny. And I asked him, what's a Heeny? And <laughs> his response was, a Heeny is a Heeny. <laughs> and yeah, like sometime after LiveJournal uh, would allow you to uh, look up, um, or maybe it was import, or um, or something. But yeah, I looked up, uh, I was just like looking up, uh, I was able to look up um, new um, LiveJournal users by email and I was going, oh wait, no, it isn't here. Hand over this one. Yes, oh my gosh, this is it. Okay, it wasn't, it wasn't issue one of Skele Bunnies. That teeny, yes, I can't believe I missed this the first time. But, uh, but, but yes, oh my gosh. Uh, I'd also toyed around with the idea of getting a devil booby tattoo, and uh, I think I told him that in the email as well. Uh, I have not yet. I really should, because devil boobies are adorable. I love Tommy Kovac, and he's, uh, he does this other thing, it's a zine called Library Bonnet. I think he still makes it. It's been going since, oh my gosh, I want to say at least 1988 was, uh, was what I read, was when he first started doing that. Uh, he's on Instagram. He mostly just posts a lot of his weird little drawings on Instagram, which are just wonderfully, it, it, it's a wonderful kind of bad taste. Like, if you're a fan of John Waters, like myself, you will love Tommy Kovac. I just, I love him. I love him. He's, he's adorable, and he does adorable arts, and thank you so much to Dark Horse, and I don't, I don't know, I'm, <laughs> you leave such ordinary comments sometimes that I don't know what the hell to make of this right here, other than, you know, it was stuff on my, on my Amazon wish list. Uh, for this year's birthday, and they were both very inexpensive together, so. <laughs> um, again, thank you so much uh, to Dark Horse, as I said just now, two seconds ago, and and thanks so much to Tommy Kovac, if you ever see this. Like, he makes some of the most wonderfully weird comics and drawings and stuff, and so much, like, anything out of Skelet Bunnies is just, like, ripe for Tattoo Flash. Like, this is just tat. That's what I think of it when I see a lot of his stuff. Um, not all of it, but, you know, the, uh, the Skelet Bunnies style. It's just, like, asking to be somebody's obnoxious tattoo. Oh my gosh. There's a, there's a quote here about Stitch from, uh, a Bentley Little, uh, Bram Stoker Award winning novelist. Uh, bold and original with a tone that shifts from horrific to humorous. Stitch mills prose and comics, stories, backstories, and side stories uh, to approach its eerie, subtle tale from all angles. There's nothing subtle. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's a very thinly veiled coming out allegory. And hey, if a novelist finds it subtle, that's. I I'm sure you won in a word for some reason. <laughs> Uh, Tommy Kovac is a postmodern marvel, and I would I would have to agree with that last statement, especially. So yeah, um, oh my gosh, yeah. If if you're at all interested in you know just obnoxiously poor taste humor, Skelebunnies is your thing, and I should definitely like reread Stitch now that it's been compiled into gra now that it's been compiled into graphic novel form years ago. Yeah, March 2009, yeah. It's been compiled into graphic novel form for about ten years now, and I have obviously been a fan since, oh my gosh, when was it first out? 1999, 2000, I think, was when they were originally published. I love Stitch. I should reread it and do a review of it. I got her um, record and post reviews for Student of Kami, and, um, which is over here. And then work on a review for, um, 
what's it called, uh, paragenesis. But first, before I do any of that, I should probably go and do my other chores after I finish watching yesterday's news. But, uh, but again, thanks so much, and when I come back to this, I can run down a couple other things on the uh, birthday wish list. Okay, so I'm back from doing chores and stuff outside the apartment, and I figured I would seriously... Again, thanks so much to Dark Horse in spite of all of your ornery comments. I don't know, or maybe because of your ornery comments. It was really nice to uh, receive the two uh, Tommy Kovac. I guess this one is more like a graphic novel because the uh, the comic is really presented like, um, like chapters in a story. So uh, this would definitely be graphic novel. Um, Scala Bunnies, it's just a collection of, of obnoxious comic strip stories that are often very work inappropriate <laughs> and therefore quite YouTube inappropriate. Uh, highlights from my, uh, my, my birthday wish list this year. Uh, so I've got, uh, I've got a few books that I would really like to um, review. Um, in addition to, yeah, I do need to uh, reread Stitch um, for a review that I want to do. And this, I'm probably just going to tack it onto the uh, Stitch review. So in addition to these, I've also got, uh, I believe the first two um, Adventure Time graphic novels are on my list. I love Adventure Time. It was only like during the last season <laughs> that I found out that there was uh, comics, graphic novels um, related to Adventure Time. Like I knew that they did the, uh, the the Card Wars game that that they've come out with that, and while I would um, eventually like to pick that up, I would really love to read the um, the graphic stories a slightly bit more. Uh, speaking of games, though, in addition to Hole, which I mentioned in the first part of this before I came home and decided that it's too hot for clothes, even at this time of night. I am wearing I am wearing skivvies. I'm not naked. Okay. Uh, in addition to Hole. That now tabletop storytelling RPG, which is completely playable, but it is written in such a satirical way with this this formatting that can only be um, from the inside. You know, it's that level of hilarity. There is a board game, uh, Sagrada. Um, it's a uh, dice drafting game where you got, you know, you, you, there's like a, a number of dice that you have to arrange, um, and it's, and I've also included the expansion for um, scaling up to six players, because the base game only scales up to four. Uh, I, I think I could start doing uh, some game reviews with the, uh, with the board games and card games that I love. Oh, please don't, please don't, that's my dinner. Oh, I do my game night, and... I have been thinking of doing reviews of board games and card games that I enjoy playing. Uh, I've been thinking of doing that for a while. This just looks really interesting to me, and I see it at Barnes & Noble all the time. I've also included a couple of vinyl albums that I just, I'd just really like to have. Uh, I'm gonna be just straight up honest with that, like, you know, the Nico albums, including the reissue of Marble Index. I just want to have that, and I'm probably never going to be able to afford, um, like, a first edition stereo or mono of the Marble Index. Just, I don't know, like, just go on Discogs. You'll see that I will never afford it. Um, I don't know, unless I get Mary Rich or something. That's a possibility, I suppose. As long as I'm not dead yet, but even if I do die, no, no, please, please don't marry me after I'm dead, because then I can't enjoy my Nico albums on this earthly plane. Uh, um, but then what? Um, also, like the the latest Janelle Monet album on vinyl, I really love her. She's adorable. She's just I don't know. She's just she's she's like she's like somebody took Grace Jones and Prince 
and they had a baby, and it was Janelle Monet. And yeah, yeah, that beautifully sums up just like all of her work, honestly. Uh, there's just a couple of DVDs that I just really like. Uh, highest priority, I'd say, for the DVDs that I want is the old. Uh, <laughs> it's one of the first mockumentaries, I would say. It's, I believe, Swedish. Um, Haxan, H A X A N. I've loved that. Uh, this is another thing where I'm just like slowly replacing my old VHS collection of silent films. A lot I have I've seen so many times that I've been a little bit slower to replace them. This is one where it's gotten such a reputation in relatively recent years, like the last ten years. It has this massive reputation all of a sudden that I, at least as far as I'm concerned, it seems very sudden, and I'm like, really? This has been, like, I had this on VHS. Like, that's, like, it, it's not like it was explicitly banned, at least in U.S. and U.K. distribution, so... Um, I know for a while it was presumed lost, but obviously that changed, well, because it got a, D a VHS release in the 90s, I believe. Yeah, whatever. It, it has a massive reputation. It's been a while since I've seen it, since um, when I moved back to Ypsilanti. I just, like, purged almost all of my VHS tapes. I've got an old Shadow Project concert that I I just basically need to get that uh, put onto not just a digital, but NTSC. So, <laughs> yeah, I have an old PAL recording of... A, uh, of a Shadow Project concert, and, an, and another uh, uh, PAL VHS of a Dexys Midnight Runners concert. I've also got the latest Dexys Midnight Runners album on, um, on this year's birthday wish list. I'm going to do a video very soon enough, anyway, of my, um, of my top favorite um, non-goth bands. Well, bands that are absolutely, undebatably not goth. So if you ask me, if you ask anybody about my age, um, Typo Negative is in this liminal area where they're goth enough. Like, yeah, they don't play strictly gothic rock, but their um, their their take on the doom, doom metal sound is far more informed by gothic rock than um, than than what most people think of as gothic metal lately, which would be like a symphonic goth. Well, yeah, I'm I'm rambling now. Um, so now that we're done talking about the DVDs and yeah, like highest priority right now, I would say are the bicycle baskets. Now I did. Yeah, I did go with um, some nicer baskets. The uh, the Wicker um, Nantucket Basket Company ones. Are we going to load? But uh, but then what happens is uh, so yeah, I picked out like the the nicer Nantucket uh, Basket Company um, bicycle baskets. They're Wicker. Uh, I believe the front one is in the area of forty five dollars. That you know, that I can access, like, going off of memory. I know the two side baskets, which can latch onto the back. I've got a, uh, I've got one of those, ah, oh, crap, I forget the name of it. It's a, it's a little panel that goes over the wheel, and in theory, you can strap, like, a milk crate or something to it with a bungee cord. So, these, uh, these baskets will latch onto the sides of that, and... That would be really nice to have the baskets for my bicycle, in part because I do want to take my bicycle out some more, and it would be great if I could use it to do some errands, if I can carry things safely, like, because, you know, like, um, holding, like, shopping bags or something over your wrists while you're trying to hold onto the handlebars is not the safest thing to do, so. Yeah, I knew I picked out um, some pricier ones. Uh, I just really like them. I like the wicker ones. Um, they're, they're beautiful. They, uh, I've, I've seen the, uh, the same ones at a shop in town. Uh, the Amazon price is probably the best price we're going to find on these. But yeah, they're, I just really want some, like, you know, beautiful baskets for my bicycle. It's, uh, my bicycle, uh, vintage 1970s, it's a Worksman Cycles folding bicycle, so it folds in half, I've got it, uh, locked up onto the, uh, the guardrail right outside my unit here on the third floor. Here's my bike. 
just brought it upstairs after running out a couple small errands on it, though I ended up taking the bus for about half of them. On the good side, they have a rack in front of the bus that I can put my bike on, so. This is where back baskets would fit onto. I'm not sure what they mean to hold on with this thing, but it's spring powered and <sighs> yeah, I know it's got a lot of surface rust, mostly surface that that might want some extra care, the kickstand. Maybe only just this side. But yeah, it folds in half. It's amazing. But yeah, that's that's about it. Those are like those are some highlights of you know just a few things. And again, thanks so much. I really wasn't even expecting yet to get like two books. <laughs> I wasn't expecting even to get these, um, like both these in specific and like the mere concept of just like two books. I'm like, really? Wow, somebody did that. Uh, other things, you know, on there that should be on there anyway. I don't know, just like a couple more books, a couple more DVDs. This year I am, I don't know, nothing on my wish list that would be stuff for cats because uh, pretty much every, every, um, every winter since I've been back in town, like, people buy gifts for my cats more than they do for me. Like, my cats get more, like, my cats make out a make out like bandits every winter solstice and uh, like especially Nigel especially Nigel because um he was my only cat my first winter back in Ipsy from Lansing and like I looked up the prices of uh, things that people got him and <laughs> I was just like wow collectively um my my friends have spent more money on Nigel like than they spent you know like getting me anything, which, like, a couple people just, like, gave me, like, a, a bit of cash, because shit went bonkers with my food assistance after I moved back to Ipsy, and so, yeah, cash was nice. I got a gift card for the grocery store from my doctor that winter. Like, Nigel, N Nigel, like, walked away with, like, $200 worth of, worth of, uh, worth of gifts including the cat fountain that has seen better days. It's really hard to clean the one part of it, so... And I think the motor is dead. So, yeah. I'm going to figure out a way to get to get him a new one like, uh, like my friend Scott's cat has. Not just because it's stainless steel and therefore it goes with their... <laughs> and therefore, you know, because, like, their food dishes are stainless steel. So, like, not only because it matches uh, their stuff, but also because I know that model is really easy to clean. Whereas this one, there's this one part on it that is, like, almost impossible to clean. It, it came with, uh, with a little packet of grass seed that would, like, grow up from there. And then, like... But Petco stopped making refills for the, uh, like, little grass seed to grow in there. So now, like, that part that would normally, like, have roots in there from grass, that, that's just become disgusting. Like, I've gone through so many old toothbrushes trying to clean this. Like, this thing, like, broke a toothbrush trying to clean it. It's, so I just took that part off, and now it's at a point where I don't, the motor doesn't even really make it doesn't even spurt anymore. It's, it's kind of, so it's like, ah, eh, it holds water. That's the important part, especially in summer. So as I tend to bats and kisses, and again, thanks so much. And, you know, as always, um, if you enjoyed that, hit the thumbs up. If you didn't hit the thumbs down, it doesn't matter. Interaction is interaction, right? If you have more dollars than cents, I've got a Patreon that's in the description box right next to, like, I don't know, it'll be under my Amazon wish list. Unfortunately, what I do get from Patreon, about a third of it goes to other um, creative people that I support on Patreon um, at very much the bare minimum that I can, but it's it's something. So I, I should probably do a video about that, those lovely people sometime soon. Um, but again, Take care and uh, slan.